Welcome back everybody to another Opus 12 set review video. Uh, today we're doing water and I'm joined as always by Travis Pfeiffer. Hey Alex, thanks for having me here. Beautiful November evening here uh, in the States. And uh, it was funny, before we came on here, I was trying to tell Alex this joke, and he just wasn't getting it. And then Alex went off on this other tangent, and I was like, Alex, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right by that. And uh, I want to say that it was, it was actually a lovely day here, too. So that was that was nice. I, I, um, I'm teaching a PE class right now, and uh, we just had, like, torrential rain yesterday. And then today I oh, took wow. them out. Um, to a local field and it was bright and sunny to end the day. It was a really nice final block of, uh, of teaching. So, um, awesome. yeah, yeah, good, good times. Uh, but we're not here to talk about teaching PE, although that would be sweet. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, FFTCG and the first card uh, is all yours, Travis. Sounds good. Well, continuing with our line of standard unit bad art from uh, Final Fantasy Explorers, that's the category. This is a blue mage, a four cost backup, job standard unit uh, multi-playable blue mage is very simple when blue mage enters the field you choose a forward opponent controls return it to its owner's hand i mean if you've played this game at all you know that bounce effects can be okay but also sometimes aren't very good because they give your opponent a chance to replay a good etb effect it's nice that there's no there's no um restriction on this it's just any mm -hmm. forward of any cost at the same time, for CP to give them back something they might possibly replay. Plus, it's on a backup, so again, it's got that. It's not like chances are you're not going to be able to slam this down on your final turn to clear the way to go in because you're trying to get backups back. So, yeah, I don't like this card. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I don't like it either. But then when I look at it, I'm like, it's like aggressively costed because like. We used to have Shu Yin and Opus One, which was like an EX burst for CP backup, um, and that bounced to three or less. And then we had Yuna, that was a five CP water backup that would bounce anything, uh, and that was an EX burst. And then this seems to be right in the middle there, no EX burst, but it gets uh, loses the restriction of Shu Yin, Shu Yin and uh, also loses the cost. So uh, it's kind of cool. I think it's a cool, like limited card, but I don't think it's good enough now like there's so many ways to bounce that uh if you are going to do some bouncing then it's not probably not gonna be this card well i, I totally forgot about yuna and that's like one of my favorite cards yeah, yeah that one then lets you eliminate all your opponent's break zone shenanigans so, yeah exactly yeah. so you just play that both opus one cards shoot in and, and yuna and uh one yeah. one did well and one did not <laughs> uh all right next up we've got ultros and i'm so stoked about this card for so many reasons the first being the art it's just hilarious uh but then also i just like playing ultra so this is a 2 cp uh water forward and uh he's a job or sorry um yeah job octopus uh, category six theater rhythm uh when ultras is put from the field into the break zone you may pay one water uh, cp when you do so search for one card named ultras and add it to your hand and then doll put ultras into the break zone it's the action ability Choose one forward, it loses 5,000 power until the end of the turn. So this guy is really, really solid for being a common in his, in his, his cost. So if you don't know, the the Legend Ultros, when he swings, he does, I think it's like 3k plus 1k extra damage to two, all forwards. 2k plus 1k. 2k plus 1k every extra damage to uh, um, all the forwards your opponent controls. And it scales the 1k on how many Ultros you have in the... Um, in the break zone. So this is gonna, first of all, this is our second printing of Ultra. So now we can have five Ultras in the break zone. Uh, but then this guy actually goes into the break zone and then searches you the Legend Ultra. So that's huge. And then if you pull Legend Ultras and you're like, I need to get this Octopus off my side of the field. Well, guess what? He's got a break ability that he can just do anyway. Um, so I think this card is is awesome. It's very specific in, in what you use it for, but it's awesome. I was going to comment that, that it's super specific, but uh, Ultros is technically a card that can only get stronger with the more they print. So I'll just say probably my favorite part about him is as a blocker, if he's been on the field at least more than one turn, because you can block the attack and then on the stack tap him and break him. And then you can either shrink that very forward that block or maybe shrink another forward, which will then prevent them from going in with that one. Um, so I've always enjoyed cards like that, that mm -hmm. they can block and then on the stack like do their extra effect. 
Um, so yeah, I really appreciate that about it. Yeah, him. in the case of Altros, if he blocks and then puts himself into the break zone, you're doing that before damage calculation, so he can't combo with himself with his own attack, uh, right. but he can uh, discourage another attacker um, from attacking if, if you lower their power. So uh, definitely a really interesting card. Yeah. Uh, you know what is not quite so interesting, however, hmm. is uh, the Scholar from Final Fantasy XIV. Actually, this is category special. This is one of our special cards. Uh, the job is standard unit. It is a four-cost backup. Another four-cost backup and wander multi-playable. So Scholar reads, when Scholar enters the field, choose up to two active forwards you control. Dull them. Then, draw one card for each forward you have dulled due to this ability. So the only combo I really think of with this that most people mentioned is Layla Viking. You put out Layla Viking, they can't attack that turn anyway, so then you put in Scholar, you dull both of them, and then you draw two cards off of it. I understand why it's as high a cost as it is, because in theory you can recoup your cost back right away, but that's also a big ask to mm -hmm. dull two of your up to and you could just dull one, but again, I always try to look at like the card's highest value, which is dulling two, that you know, Layla Viking are great because they're chump blockers, especially the Vikings. So the idea of dulling them out of the way and then they can't block. So again, ideally it's like, it's a really early turn. You aggressively put out Layla Viking and then you immediately slam down the scholar, but that's a lot of what ifs and, 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 you know, things going exactly right for you. Uh, if there's another combo out there that I'm not seeing with this card, please let us know in the comments. Cause that was the only one that came to mind. Cause like, I don't think, 10 turns into the game you're like well let me take out my two big blockers so i can draw some more cards like i just don't think that's going to be worth it yeah i just i think the price is too much to, to doll your own cards like maybe in a brave deck but then it's like you could play like merrill web or or Gramps or Batteron if you really want that four CP draw and then all those cards, well not Batteron, but the other two are EX Burst. So I feel like we have a lot of options in the four CP slot to draw cards. And while they might not draw two uh, straight up, that um, the cost to do this one is, is too much for me. So I'm, I don't rate it highly. Agreed. Okay, we've got Captain next. Uh, and I laughed so hard on the RVA or when I was listening to the RVA podcast because um, <laughs> they're like, it's like the card's name is Captain and he's Job Warrior. Like, what is that? That was, I, w I was laughing a lot on the bus because it was just like, why isn't he Job Captain? He should just be Job Captain. Uh, he's a three CP monster um, Job Warrior, which is, it is like a job that we have keywords for but i think they're right. to do with forwards not uh, monsters anyway so he's um uh one of our new types of monsters when he enters the field he gets two effects uh one of two effects so you can become a 7k forward which is like a bummer and you wouldn't want to do that uh or you can put him into the break zone choose a forward and return it to its owner's hand it could be your forward their forward whatever and then you draw one card and discard one from your hand so um i don't know like this is it's just like a slower Leviathan or slower, like, I don't know. It's not that, it's not that good. Since this is the last of this group of monsters, I'll kind of just mention them all in a bubble. I probably like him actually a little better than some of the other ones, but still like, I get what they were going for. They were trying to have this value of like, oh, it's versatile. So if you really need a forward, you can put it down as a forward. Otherwise you can do it for the effect, but you know, all of them, you know, kind of one of the, the nice things about monsters generally is that they're not forwards until you choose to make them forwards on your opponent's turn. So that way they avoid a lot of enter the field effects. So when you have a monster who's just a plain forward with no body, like that's not very appealing. So to me, that whole part of it might as well not even be there. What makes these guys interesting is their effects. And pretty much every effect we've seen is like you said, it's an effect a summon already has. And yet it, it's slower than a summon. It can only be done on your main phase. So... I just, yeah, I just, I, I get what they were trying with these. And again, I think maybe they'll be okay in limited or draft, but as far as constructed, I just, I think they really missed the boat on this design. Mm. Yeah. Uh, playing vanilla forward sucks. So <laughs> uh, let's move on. All right. Next we have Kais, or perhaps it's Keese. I'm going to call him Kais. This is Kais, a two CP water backup from Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. That's his category. Uh, his job is partner, so hey, sounds like he'll be on board with you. 
So this one's interesting. It says, when Kais enters the field, look at the top card of your deck and your opponent's deck. Put them on the top or bottom of their respective decks. He has an action ability. You just dole Kais. Choose one card named Lael. It gains 2,000 power until the end of the turn. Now, I know that action effect sounds like it should go with the new forward Lael we got in Earth, but in reality, you should do it on the backup Lael. That's a two cost and give your backup 2,000 power. You can't actually do that, and it won't do anything, but it would be funny to see you try. Um, this card is very interesting because, to my knowledge, and correct me if you know of anything else, I think this is the first card that lets you look at your opponent's deck and actually let, lets you look at the card on their deck. Hmm. Yeah, we have stuff like Lonnie that will pull it off, but this actually like lets you take their deck and check it. And so first thing I thought of was the new Cactar monster from Wind. This is a way to actually verify what that Cactar is going to hit. Now, of course, you'd have to have a Ford on the field and the Cactar, yada, yada, yada. So just on its own, it's a 2CP water backup. Those are never bad. Um, again, cards like this kind of have a high roll to them because you pull something out. And what if you say, oh, I'm not going to give them this. I'll put it under. And maybe they didn't need that thing. Maybe you denied them. I don't know. But it's kind of nice. It gives you a scry, too. Even not considering your opponent, it gives you a chance to, do I want this next card? Like, oh, it's going to be a Famprit and they're about to attack me. I'll leave it on there. Um, so, yeah, he's cheap. He's got an interesting effect. He's definitely worth trying out. Yeah, I agree. Um, he also works for that old, or not old, but that, uh, well, that's actually more recent, uh, Ultimecia, that can uh, play cards from oh, the top yeah. of both players' decks. Um, so this is now a way to interact with that card. It's also water. The Lail Pump is totally for future Lails. You're not going to be playing the current Lail, so um, this, is, uh, this is a cool card. It's uh, also very easily searchable with uh, Norstalin which is always important. So yeah, it's, I think it's a cool card. Yeah, it's neat. Okay, next up we've got Quacho Queen, which is a World of Final Fantasy card. It's 4 CP forward, 8,000 power. Uh, but Quacho Queen is also a monster in all situations. Uh, and uh, so when she enters the field, you can choose a monster of cost two or less and you break someone and add it to your hand. That effectively is making her a 2 CP forward. Uh, and then if it's also, uh, if the monster is also a forward, which is how the Waff um, monsters work, then you play it onto the field instead. Um, which is good or bad depending on what you're doing. So I think that's I think it's a really cool card. I feel like it's underrated because it's just um, super efficient, um, and you can, if you're playing monsters, you want to bring back monsters obviously after you've done stuff with them. So I, I think it can like it could work even in just like a, a monster deck without Waff monsters. But then um, like I don't know how good a Waff monster deck is to be honest, uh, because they all search summons of different elements. Uh, so that sounds kind of tricky to work with. Um, but yeah, I think that overall, though, it's just like a, it's a powerful card and it can only uh, be better with time because there's gonna, just going to be more like it's always going to be that option that you have to fish out monsters. Yeah, and a lot of monsters are in water already, so she does fit with that aspect. Um, great artwork. Love it in full art. I'll just kind of comment on the second part of the effect that if the monster is also a forward. Currently, there's only three monsters in the game that are that, and that's Frit in Fire, Zapped in Lightning, and Babliz in Ice. None of which she shares an element with, so she element clashes, and, you know, you listen to RVA, I mentioned this on there, but, like, she has, see that little, little cute, like, duck-like thing in the background? That's called a Quacho. Those are legit her, her minions, her servants. They serve her. Why did they not make a Quacho monster? for this set for water that she could pull back so again even in limited you don't actually have a target for this so like th that baffles me it's right there on the card i can see him right there mm -hmm. like why did they not make a quacho to go with her that was such a missed opportunity yeah that doesn't make any sense to me but I, I still just think because she's got that first bit about bringing back any monster that you know that that leaves room for her to be solid yeah um but i know that you you think this next card definitely is solid is that right? Oh yeah, I All do, right. I do. So this is a water summon. This is Sildra from Final Fantasy V. Four cost, uh, and it reads, search for two water characters, two category five characters, or one of each, each with a different cost, and add them to your hand. I'll admit the first time I read this, I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I, it didn't really, it didn't really hit me, but like, I think a lot of people are sleeping on this card. I mean, just take that very first text search for two water characters that means in mono water this will fetch you anything other mm -hmm. than another summon you can grab any backup you want you can grab any forge you want you can grab a monster you want and water is so combo heavy with things like 
Layla Viking or Cloud of Darkness and Cagnazo or Cagnazo and Nicol or, or, or um, Ultros and Nicol. Like, those are great combos, but a lot of times it's hard to assemble those combo pieces. I can't tell you how many games I'll draw three Layla and can't pull out a Viking, or I'll draw the Viking mm-hmm. and can't pull out Layla. If it's early, you can throw it down. Oh, I don't have any backups. Let me go grab two backups. Like, yes, there's the restriction of they each have to be a different cost. But again, there's a lot of combo fun pieces in mono water that I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, And now outside of water, too, if you're playing a five heavy deck, I don't know how relevant five decks are. But again, you could grab any character. This could grab Neo X death, you know, like... Yeah, I think this card has a lot of potential, and I think people are really sleeping on it. And it's just got great artwork, too. Woo. Uh, yeah, totally. Still just such a cool um, cool summon, or just companion, we can call it, because it is a companion as well. And I think that, uh, you know, like, it's... I think it's so good, like for all the reasons you said. And for example, how many games are you like, oh, if only I had got my two CPU now, the first one went to burst, and then... Uh, uh, to damage and I never saw another one well this will solve that problem for you um, and it could get you out of a pinch without drawing backups early but you have to be careful because if you play this you're always playing this at a loss like in that it's a it's a card out of hand so um, like especially if you play it off, off early with, just by pitching two cards um, you get two cards back but then you've lost the soldier from your hand so um, you have to be careful with it for sure um, how many of these are you going to run on a deck? I would probably start with two, and I'll see how that feels. Because he, here's the great open. If you open with the backup water unit that makes all summons mm-hmm. cheaper, and let's say you get no other backups, but you've got Sildren Hand turn two, you tap, pitch one, you're playing it on curve because it's only three now. Boom, you're pulling two cards. That's going to feel great. I mean, it is if you need two cards, but then you ha- like you got to play a back- backup or something too. You better sure. follow yeah. that up. You search your two CP backup with Sildren and you play it. I'm giving it the thumbs up yeah. again. Yeah. I'll, 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 be, I'll be the first one to come back at the end of the opus and say, eh, yeah, it actually didn't feel so good for this, that, or reason. But I think this has a lot of potential, especially in mono water. Oh, baby, it does. Okay, here we go. This is Strago, or do you call him Strago? Which one are you? I always call them Strago. Strago? Uh, yeah, I, that's how I always said it when I. This was the first Final Fantasy I ever played, it was Final Fantasy mm. VI. Uh, Technically, I thought it was three because it was on the Super Nintendo. Uh, but yes, I always call them Strago. All right, that's what we'll go with. So Strago, he's a 5 CP forward, uh, and he is a blue mage, category 6. When Strago enters the field, uh, choose one forward your opponent controls to return it to its owner's hand. You, then you may play one character character of the same cost as uh, as it from your hand onto the field. Uh, by the way, he has 7,000 power. This is a super cool effect. Um the, the one thing that I and so there's obviously some difficult components of it. They need to have a target. Uh, they need to have a good target that you really don't want to come back down. Uh, they need you need to have a card with the same cost as their target. Uh, so obviously hitting four cost and three cost cards are going to be your most likely to have a something to play. But like having that card in hand to play that's equal to theirs, like there's no guarantee that's going to happen. So. Like, I just feel like there's going to be some turns where you have him, where you top deck him, and you're just going to be like, oh, what do I do? Like, I can't just play it. Like, uh, I guess, like, you can just use it as a bounce, at, uh, like, at worst. But, um, I, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty mixed on this. I'm pretty mixed. Uh, I could call him potential the card. Yes. Drago yeah. Was always my, yeah. Drago was always my probably my least favorite character in six, um, and I didn't think he really had a good card in this game yet. But I actually really like this one. At, at its worst, it is the bounce. Like you do get an un, unrestricted bounce, mm-hmm. so that is nice. I mean, of course, you want to resolve the second effect, but if, if you can't for some reason, you do at least get the bounce. But man, that just sounds so fun. Like, oh, oh, you have a you know four CP whatever here. Let me send that back to your hand. Hey, here comes my Kadaj for free. Have fun playing with that. And like I said, it's character. If there's a key backup you can get down, hey, let me just put off down this backup for free. Thanks. So like, yeah, he's a little high rolly, but he sounds really fun. And, and when you get that effect to resolve, you're gonna, that's gonna feel pretty amazing. Like what, what a trade that is. Yeah. I just took away one of yours and I put down something for the same value on mine. And I've got the body that Strago has now. So yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm holding out hope for him. I hope he, he ends yeah, up me being too. as amazing as I, as I hope he will be. 
Yeah, I, I I would also hold out some hope for him as well. And I'm sure we've got some tremendous commenters, by the way. We've got some people that comment on our videos and they just are like giving us gold in terms of combos that we forgot to touch on um, and ideas for decks, etc. Because it's hard to get through everything. Like it's it, when you're kind of like live on camera, like it's really hard right. to be 100%. Um, so we really appreciate those comments. So tell us how we're right or wrong about uh, Strago. And I think he's going to be 100% a test card because y you don't know what he's going to do until you see the board you're against. Like mm -hmm. this one, he's really interesting because you really can't plan around it because you have to just wait and see. Okay, what are my targets to bounce now? What do I have to throw down? Kind of thing. So, yeah, can't wait to test with him. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Next, we have some more uh, Warrior of Light Love, Job Warrior of Light, Category FFL. Six cost backup. This is Sarah FFL. When Sarah FFL enters the field, you may search for up to two category FFL forwards or job warrior of light forwards and add them to your hand. Action ability, you dull and put Sarah into the break zone, choose a forward, activate it. Uh, so she's kind of like Cindy from the last opus for Final Fantasy XV. Cindy would go out and search two 15 forwards. This one searches either warriors of light or the FFL forwards. There is a 7 cost Sarah that plays a Warrior of Light, um, a 4 cost or less from the deck to the field, which was cool, but it couldn't be light or dark, which mm -hmm. really I think hurt it because you, what I always wanted to play was like one of the light walls, which I never could. Um, so I do think this Sarah will be better than that. Anything that's just going to return two cards in your hand, Cindy ended up being really good in 15, so I think this will be good too. Um, definitely going to try it out over the other Sarah. The only thing I don't like is I think the action ability is stupid. Like, Cindy had the ability to just tap herself and give any 15 forward brave. You have to tap and break her to just activate a forward. I don't, I don't think that like, I don't think that would have been ridiculous on a six cost that you could tap her to activate a forward and that was it. Oh, or at man. least give it something else. Like, I don't know, <laughs> having to lose her just to activate a single forward, like that doesn't seem very strong. So other than that effect, I really like her. I don't know. Activating a forward is super strong. I'm actually like incredibly high. I think that this action ability really? is a gift. I think this is a gift that they gave this to her and that uh, um, for multiple reasons. One, activating a forward is amazing uh, for blocking, uh, for dodging ice effects. And then two, clearing out Sarah uh, to play other backups. Like they just gave her like backups that could just break themselves. That's a huge, that's a huge boost. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I actually think that's crazy. Um, and if you look at how they've costed that same ability on, um, I'm trying to, I'm blanking on the, we've had the two cards that's, it's two, two water CP and a doll to activate a forward, or we've had something like Clady oh, yeah. that is dull and activate a forward, but it has to be a knight. So they've clearly costed that ability, um, to be, um, more expensive, so, so I think that that's actually a really crazy ability. So I like her. I think she's. I think she's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to use her. It'd be interesting. Water, water, lightning. If you did, if you played her and just searched uh, Diana and Alba. Right. Yeah. And then you're just set up for some some fun. Okay. Next up, we've got Astrologian, uh, which is uh, a two CP standard unit water backup, uh, category fourteen, doll. Um, doll put uh, Astrologian into the break zone, and then reveal the top card of your deck if it's not a backup. Add it to your hand. So this is kind of interesting. We had an Opus Six Astrologian that was pretty popular because it did the opposite. It uh, revealed the top card of your deck, and if it was a backup, then you got it. But that card did not break this one does uh so that is a huge difference so the um the one that did uh um didn't break you would be able to use the ice yule to constantly scry your own deck or yuna uh light yuna uh forward to constantly scry your own deck and just keep drawing cp into your hand uh which was incredible this is going to be a lot less incredible but if you do scry the top of your deck you could grab some bomb card off of it that you really need and backups typically aren't bomb cards that you need so uh it's got potential for sure uh but it's it's uh not as it's not as good as i thought it was when i first saw it if anyone out there 
finds a good use for this, let me know. I can tell you right now, I'll never run this card. Um, there's a host of great 2CP water backups already, so space is already tight. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to take a backup that I can break it, lose its efficiency, and miss its effect. Like, I'm not going to do that on effect, because knowing my luck, too, I'll be like, oh, oh, there's a backup. Well, I just broke a backup for nothing. Like, yeah, I'm not interested in a card that can break itself to potentially do nothing. So, mm. yeah, this one's not for me. Oh, and, and one other thing. This one doesn't uh, throw away the card on top of your deck, and the old one, if you did get it wrong, yeah. it would burn that card off the top of your deck. Uh, but you know what, though? I think this is a card that people aren't going to play randomly. They're going to play it in a scrying deck with Yuna or something, so sure. so they will specifically use it to grab important cards off the top of their deck. Um, I appreciate the theme with all these uh, astrologians that, you know, they're because that, that's what they do in the game they're all about drawing cards and, and that so i appreciate them making them very thematic but yeah this yes. is not for me yeah all right but you know who is for me uh let's see what time is it right now oh i think it's dusk this is dusk job warrior of white category ffl he likes it three cp uh seven thousand power forward when dusk enters the field you may pay one water when you do so, play one forward of cost three or less from your hand onto the field. He has a special ability, Blessing, which is a Dusk and one water. Choose one forward of cost three or less other than Dusk. It gains 5,000 power until the end of the turn. Draw one card. I love that special. That's really good. Any special that's going to let you draw a card to basically replace the one you know you threw out for the Dusk feels great. And then 5,000 power is no joke. Um, you can really mess with some combat math doing that. So I like the special a lot. And I, I like his first effect a lot. It's not limited to water or Warriors of Light. So any deck you have that runs water, you could pretend you could realistically throw him in and get another forward out. And because it's a single water, like you got a Tyro, you got a Chaos, anything that can tap for CP of anything, like it can easily make that. Um, and then personally, I'm a big Warriors of Light player. I like him way better than the other Dusk. The other Dusk was the one card I was like, if I had to cut something, I was always gonna cut it because what he did is he drew you a card on entry, but only if there was another Warrior of Light on the field. And I can't tell you how many times I'll draw him and I have no other Warriors of Light. It's like, well, guess he's coming down for no value. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to this one getting to ramp up. He's going to come in, hopefully bring in Ingus or uh, Ark or Lunith or maybe the new soul, maybe the old soul. Like he's got a nice lot of targets. And those are just the Warriors of Light guys. Again, you could throw this in mono water. He could bring in Kagnazo for free. Like he could bring in, boom, now I've got another body on the field. Here comes Kagnazo. I've got a bigger wave coming. He could bring in a Viking for free, let you draw back. Like I think there's a lot of potential with this card because it just has that unequivocal three or less. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's, it's really great for Warriors Light for sure. And just like, you could play a, a, a heavier water build and this is going to allow you to, even though you're going to be able to create other CP, like this will help you just cheat in whatever if you don't have the right CP composition or color uh, element composition. Um, I don't like the special very much. I think it's it's like, like I don't think you're going to need to boost really that much. It's already a super powerful deck and um, it's so specific again like you said you have to have another warrior light out and it has to be three costs or less and then um and like you're just it's basically like if you run three of this guy then yeah you can cycle an extra copy out of your hand so that that's fine like and that will come in handy but this isn't going to be like a special that you're using all the time it's going to be to cycle an extra dusk out of your hand as someone who plays Warriors of Light a lot, I'm going to disagree for this one reason, and that the most common thing people try to remove against me, Warriors of Light, are the three Anthems, which is Ark, Lunith, and Ingus, and then I run the Light Refia. So those three are three costs, and they boost everybody else, um, but they don't boost themselves. They'll boost each other, but they don't give a self-boost. So they're always the weakest forwards, and mm. they're the targets people will always try to take out with a with you know an Ifrit or something, um, to mess with the math. So being able to save one of those, give them a 5k bump, and then draw a card. I actually think in that specific situation, yeah. I personally think that's going to be pretty strong, which is what I'm thinking of for this, because again, I'm so used to those three getting yeah. targeted. I'm like, oh, maybe I can actually protect them a bit now, so... But then, I mean, it's it's like you said, though, like, you know, every time you wanted to play the old Dusk, you didn't have the other Warrior Lights out. So True. every time you're going to want to play this special, you're not going to have the right costed Warrior Light out. It's, yeah, I think probably. it's just too specific <laughs> um, 
to be like a consistent thing you use. It's like any any yeah. special has that like little combat tricky potential, but yeah, overall I think it's not that that amazing of a special. That's fair. I, I do yeah. think it's kind of weird they felt the need to put the restriction on the special as well. Like I think it would have been fine if it was just no, just pick a forward, but or pick a warrior light. You know, there, yeah. there's your restriction. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it's me. Uh, so next up is Paladin. It's a 4 CP standard unit 8K forward. My favorite uh, category 14. Uh, if Paladin forms a party, the damage dealt to Paladin becomes zero instead. Uh, you know, there's there's like a reason to run this in a in a in a party uh, deck, like because then he's always surviving and you always have someone sticking around to to form a party because sometimes you know getting a party together you have to get all your friends there they have to say yes you have to mail the invitations um and then if no one shows up you're not having a party and it's the same thing with playing cards uh so already having one card out to be that the basis of the party and he's like the cool guy you can see his shield like he's definitely the cool guy uh people are going to come to the party so uh i guess it depends on if one, if party decks are good, and two, if they're having trouble keeping uh, party goers out on the field. So interesting because almost every other paladin card I know of, usually the paladin is the one taking the damage. They mm -hmm. usually like redirect the damage from someone else to them. That's their like cover mechanic. So it's so interesting that for once you have one that's like, oh no no no, I don't take any damage. Um, the only real combo I can immediately think of is if you're running a party deck, maybe water wind. Uh, there is a chocobo that has the same effect that if that chocobo parties that chocobo can't take damage so you party to these two together let them block with whatever they want doesn't matter they neither of them can get hurt so that's a fun little interaction yeah <laughs> it's it's definitely fun uh, for sure uh let's go on to the uh to the next one all right this is a card that has a lot of people hype uh this is beatrix from final fantasy 9 She's a job knight. She's a 2 CP, 5,000 power forward. When Beatrix or a job knight enters your field, all the forwards you control gain 2,000 power until the end of the turn. She has an action ability for a cost of zero. During this turn, the cost required to cast your next job knight forward is reduced by two. It cannot become zero. You can only use this ability during your turn and only once per turn instant instant boost for any kind of knight archetype which doesn't really exist but you know people have been kind of trying to make it work this is a great instant boost for it um I, again this is some of my favorite card design beatrix herself is rather weak you know she's only a 5k but anytime she comes in or any of her friends are coming in boom 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 that board is just getting boosted 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 um and that effect isn't limited per turn so like the, the first thing I think of is the uh, 6 CP uh, Legend Ramza, which he needs 10,000 power to gain haste and to go in and break something. And so if he enters the field, boom, he's instantly boosted. Like, So again, I like this card because she may be weak herself, but you got to deal with her. Because if you don't deal with her, then every turn, not only are they getting that power boost, more importantly, they're putting something in for two less. So if she's on the field, that Ramza, which already gets reduced by other forwards on the field, then you shrink it by another two. So minus one for Beatrix, minus another two, that's three. You just pay three for him. Boom, it boosts him up. Like, there's so much potential here, and, and just it's so fun. Um, yeah, she's going to be a great boost for Knights. Yeah, she's, uh, she's bananas. I love that you can... Um play her and then immediately use her to discount somebody mm -hmm. so i think there's going to be a ton of interactions with that and i love this this is actually what i was just thinking about paladin i didn't say it uh the last card uh that i would love it so much more if it was a two or three cp card that didn't take damage like that would make it way better than a four cp card uh, and the same yeah. thing here like i think in the past they would have printed this as a four cp 5k and they're like oh but you get the other effects it's like no this is aggressively costed and i love it yeah, I agree. Yeah, it seems like I hope they're kind of realizing there's some stuff in the past like he's like way over costed. Like, no, mm. this again, th this is good design. It's cheap, but it's easy and it has a strong effect, but it's like edge. It's easy to remove. So, again, high potential, but not like this massive headache to deal with. So, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of bomb cards, we've got Minwoo. Uh, you know. He's oh, a, two, a bomb, all right. Two CP uh, backup, and uh, he's theater rhythm. And uh, what is he? Is he sorry? Is he two? Or, my, it's really small on my screen. I can't remember what he's from. He's two or three. Yeah, two. He's from two. Two. Okay. 
okay. I, I'm second guessing myself. So he's two water CP, two generic CP, dull, and put him into the break zone. Cast a summon of cost seven or less from your hand uh, without paying the cost. Uh, but I mean, you are paying the cost. You're paying five CP for it. So it's like a discount. And then you could play it. You could splash like an off color summon. Um, but I, I, it's, not, it's not worth it. Yeah, garbage. Like you're paying five CP and losing a backup. Like I, to me, it needed to be at minimum a discount of three. And even then, I don't know if it would have been worth it. But yeah, I'm going to pay five and lose a backup just to get a two discount on this summon i could have like i don't know mm-hmm. again yeah i just don't it's, it's take us away from here i will gladly do that as a matter of fact let's 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 get something glorious after that how about a legend with one of my favorite final fantasy characters who gets a zillion cards in this game but hey whatever a red lesser so this is our water legend of the set this is yuna job gold wings category final fantasy 10 my personal favorite final fantasy she is a three cp seven thousand power forward Yuna reads, when Yuna enters the field, if a forward you controlled formed a party this turn, draw two cards. When Yuna forms a party and attacks, choose one forward. It loses 4,000 power for each attacking forward until the end of the turn. She has an action ability for cost zero. Name one element other than light or dark. Yuna becomes the named element until the end of the turn. You can only use this ability once per turn fantastic card exactly mm-hmm. what party support needed um again this is a card you have to deal with her because if she starts party attacking into you if she party attacks with one person she's reducing something's power by eight thousand, which is huge and and power reduction is always stronger than damage because damage can be prevented by like can't receive damage effects nothing prevents power reduction so far if she party attacks with three people god help you 12,000 power that's crazy and she has built in the ability to party with anyone so again you can put this in any of these great party decks that are coming out that's all that's they really thought about that design and then best of all she's going to get you so much value as long as you had a party form up and attack that turn it's great that that party didn't need to like deal damage so even if they get blocked or if they blow them up on the stack, whatever, they formed a party, they went in, so now she can come in. And again, it also gives this card some intelligence and thought. You can't just slam her down main phase one. If you want that value, you have to have made a party attack, and then she has to come in main phase two to get you those two cards. So yes, you gotta have two forwards. Yes, you will have had to have partied, but if you do that, Yuna will be kind to you and Yuna will pay you back strongly. Well said. I mean, I, honestly, it just depends. Like everything on the card reads really well. Like everything is a strong effect, uh, and it just depends if if parties are good or not. Like if parties are good, she's going to be the key card for that. Um, and I, I'm I'm curious to see how commonly you can get a party to attack before you play her. And I'm also curious if the advantage of drawing cards um, is worth. It like hypothetically, if you had a Layla Viking out and they had no blockers, do you party attack so you can get value from her, or do you uh, get two points of damage? And like, how do you weigh that? Uh, I think there's going to be some Good cool, question. cool thinking, uh, thinking plays there about uh, with this uh, card. Yeah, can't wait to see her in action. Okay, next up we've got one of the coolest art uh, cards in the uh, set, and that is Realm. Uh, so Realm is a 4 CP forward, 5k power, uh, category 6 job Pictomancer. When Realm enters, enters the field, choose one character without the multi-card uh, symbol other than Realm, and then you may search for one character with the same name and add it to your hand. So uh, this is kind of cool for, um, for thinning out your deck for uh also for searching out specials that's really what it's for because i mean this is a lot to like it you want to have to play this over other realms and you want to have to play this for cp 5k like just to get a card out of your deck or just to get some cp in your hand like there's other ways to search so i think that like you're gonna want to be searching a special for with this i hope i can pull a full art because whoo baby this yeah. art is so beautiful and so creative yeah she's the special fetcher um it, it'd be interesting playing this in a mirror match if like you don't have a card but like let's say you want your alua but you don't have it but your opponent has an alua and you're like haha i'm gonna pull it off of that alua or whatever mm-hmm. um yeah so she, she's interested I, I, it's, I don't think i'm gonna use her much like it's hard for me to just really see in her makeup because again without that she's just 
yeah, it's a burst, but it's such a weak body. But I don't know. I, I would love to be surprised by this one. I would like to be like, oh no, there's actually some pretty cool uses you can do for it. Don't run her in a Highlander deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, let's move on. All right. Now we have a card. Uh, man, some more 15 love. This is Luna Freya from Final Fantasy 15, Job Oracle. She's a 2 CP, 5,000 power forward. She has two action abilities. First, dull one active category 15 forward. Luna Freya gains 2,000 power until the end of the turn. Second, dull four active category 15 forwards. Choose one forward, put it into the break zone. So, I am a big 15 player like i have a category 15 deck that's almost all 15 cards and i've been you know i was always saying oh, how do i get the backup luna Freya in there so they gave me another one but she's water and the backup one was tough to fit in because it's water um i'll try her i'm definitely going to try her there is a moogle that i think is lightning and taps for water and that already fits in the earth lightning of 15 so i'm going to try her so what i do like what i do like is that she doesn't have the dull symbol so you can use her abilities the moment she comes out um, and also, Ignis, who's a huge part of 15, gives all of the 15 forwards brave, and Cindy can give them brave too. So most, a lot of the stuff in that deck can already give these forwards brave, so it's not unreasonable that they will be active on your opponent's turn, which this, all this can be used on your opponent's turn. You can block with someone, bump Luna Freya. You can block Luna Freya, bump, you know, dull someone else to bump her. And I really like that second effect basically because it says put into the break zone so if you have a forward like Arden that can't be broken that's mm -hmm. very thematic especially if you've seen the ending of this game that oh no I'm not breaking you I'm just putting you in the break zone or if you have you know cards that say can't be broken by abilities that don't deal damage or whatever nope it's around that because you're not breaking them you're just putting them in there so I hope this is good at the same time it's water and 15 is mainly earth lightning and uh, I don't know I, I want to love it and I hope it goes well but I, I, I got to be honest, and I can't lie to myself, I won't be surprised if it just isn't very good. Yeah, I mean, I like that she can do it multiple times per turn. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and I also like being able to just dull your 15 forwards if you're playing against a lightning tech, and then they like target a light... Uh, they just basically can't target use effects that target active forwards because oh, you yeah. can just doll them. Like so, I like stuff like that. But then, is that worth playing her? I don't know. The doll four active is very very powerful, but it seems like it. it I, I, it, if you can get it off consistently, then obviously it's great. And then this card will be played. And then if you can't, it won't. Um, but I do like it. I like the idea of. Uh, you having somehow have like an activate all characters out and then you like put something into the break zone and then activate all your forwards and then put a second thing into the break zone yeah. but then if and you're doing that like i'm not even if you do the first one i feel like like that's a huge momentum loss to all four forwards um yeah so it's going to be tricky it's going to be tricky for this card to be any good you did bring a good point up about lightning, though. I've used yeah. uh, Ignis's the Earth Anthem for Final Fantasy III and Warriors of Light. I've used his dull ability to dodge a Bahamut Zero. Mm -hmm. Where they're like, Bahamut, I was like, oh yeah, well, dip, 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 dull it, now it's no longer active. Boom, you wasted your summon. Um, and she doesn't specify other than herself, so she counts as that fourth person. So mm -hmm. again, yes, yeah, th there is definitely. I think there is honest potential here. I just I gotta test it to really know. For sure. Yeah, so um, so far I feel like the the cards that we've gone over have been pretty evenly distributed. Uh, you know, um, you've got you got Yuna, I got Captain, uh, you got Dusk, and I got Minwu. You get Luna Freya, I get Remora. So <laughs> look at this, look at this card. Uh, so this is a six CP EX burst summon, um, and it's uh, Mobius. Uh, so choose uh, EX burst, choose one forward, draw one card. Then at the end of the turn, it loses 2,000 power for each card in your hand. Um, while you get to draw that card, and it's like, it's very, that's good because you're paying six, which is going to take cards out of your hand, or maybe you're paying five because you have Yuna. Um, yeah, it's just tough because this, this has uh, such a high cost. I feel like that's, it's so against its effect. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think this is that good. But what do you think? I oh, crazy artwork. I, this mm -hmm. makes me want to play Mobius again and be like, what is this thing? I, I don't remember seeing it in there. Um, so I don't know if it's just Carter or if it's actual creature in the story. But no. it looks crazy. 
It's it was just, just card art. Card art. <laughs> oh, darn. Yeah, most of the Mobius stuff was. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of high on this card for, for two reasons. One, you're probably going to have Yuna out, so it'll be four if you have to cast it normally. Two is because it has a burst. And on a burst, mm -hmm. this thing is sick. It is draw a card, and uh, realistically, if you have three cards in hand when either you end up casting this or you hit on a burst, you get to draw first, which is great design. Yeah. Uh, and so you're going to kill something for 8k or less. So that's really strong. Um, will it? And w what I also like about it too is that it's not like wa like some of these mono wa water summons. Like they feel like they have to go in water. This one can be opened up to other elements if you have other ways to draw. That's a good. You're point. right. It's it is six CP, so ooh, it might be a little too much. But especially on a burst, man, it's going to feel good to be like, oh really? Let me draw a card and go ahead and kill that thing as well. So I I'm hopeful for it. I'm hopeful uh, for it, but I, I understand your trepidation because I too I see the cost. I'm like, that's really high. I almost see it as a draw card burst and not a, a removal burst because controlling your hand size is very difficult, uh, yeah. especially in tight games. You're gonna I, you're gonna actually reduce like two to, two or four k with this a bunch on burst uh, because you can't control your hand size that well. I don't think it's actually that good of a burst, but. I'm happy to be proven wrong about it. Um, okay, I just well, we're feel like game and there's I'm gonna have five so in hand. You're gonna hit a burst, and I'm gonna die ah, twelve thousand. Yeah, if you were a late game and you have five in hand, you were gonna win that game anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're probably right. But no, uh, you're right. it's not. Yeah. super reliable. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Like, there's just a lot of good water summons on burst as well um, that people play. You know, uh, I'd rather control the, as water that I'm gonna have a bunch of water characters for Leviathan then control how many cards I have in my hand. Yeah, so. that's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and you know what? That's it. That's all the cards uh, that we're going to talk about in this video. And, uh, you know, Travis, what did you think overall of the of the water collection today? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm definitely not going to wash my hands of a lot of these cards because uh, I think they look really good. I think, well, I mean, I, I kind of, water is probably my second favorite element. Um so I'm a little biased towards water, so I am trying to look at it objectively. But I think there's some genuinely cool things in here. Again, there's stuff that, unlike some of the other elements, like I think Minwu and Astrologian, or Astrologian. So, like, see, there's some things. Minwu, Astrologian, Blue Mage Scholar, those I'm like, bleh, no thanks. Uh, but then, like, Ultros is really cool. The Kais is cool. Sildra is mm -hmm. cool. Strago has a lot of potential. Like, some of these cards... Water seems to have a lot of cards that, like, have a really high ceiling, but also, like, a low... So it's, like, where are they... You know, how good is Strago going to be? How good will um, the Remora end up being? So a lot of potential. Uh, I'm, I'm hesitantly optimistic for water. That might be me showing my bias. Yeah, I don't see a ton that I'm super excited for. Uh, but there are, like, lots of cards that seem solid uh except for ultros i'm building an ultros deck uh as soon as i can um i had a really really fun one that i actually did a deck tech about uh so you can check that out in my videos um it was a final fantasy 6 um ultros oh, nice. deck, deck tech um and that was that was such a fun deck so uh definitely definitely look at that but uh yeah Wait, yeah otherwise it seems, put seems that fine. new strago in there bounce a five cost from their hands slam down five slam cost down the ultros. ultros yeah that's Gravy. you know what and it's guaranteed to happen yeah exactly. all right so <laughs> we're gonna take off uh thanks for for joining me travis and then we're back with one more video with a set review uh which is our light dark and then multi color cards it's super exciting, so we're going to film that now, but you'll see it uh, tomorrow because uh, this is coming out. Now I'm going to say tomorrow a bunch of them is going to cut off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we'll we'll see you guys next time, and uh, thanks for watching. Toodaloo!